Hey everybody, Andy Ryder here with Project Lab. So my stepmom Deb's birthday was coming up and we needed to get her a birthday present. She's a little bit tough to buy presents for. She likes to cook, she makes really great banana bread and she likes antiques. So I got the idea, maybe I could make her a vintage style restaurant sign for Deb's kitchen that she could hang up in her kitchen. My dad thought it was a good idea, so I started working on a design. And I ended up working on this for about a year. I looked through hundreds of Google images of historical restaurant signs. I researched the psychological effects of different colors on whether they make you hungry or not. The real breakthrough for this design process was watching Aaron Draplin's logo design class on Skillshare. In the class, he shows you how to iterate quickly, make a bunch of different designs by moving and combining shapes together to create new shapes, and how you could quickly come up with some really cool stuff with this method. Anyway, the class was great, and so I gave it a shot, and I worked through some designs in Adobe Illustrator. I constrained myself to the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, both so that it wouldn't be huge hanging on a wall and I could still print off templates from any regular printer. And a little while later, I had a design. So I printed it out, transferred it to my three quarter inch MDF, and then I cut out the shape on the table saw and the band saw. MDF is medium density fiberboard, which is essentially sawdust and glue pressed together to make a board. And I refined the shape with the oscillating spindle sander. I gouged the edge a little bit on the table saw, so I had to fill in my mistake with some wood putty. Then I switched to thinner half inch MDF for the letters. I rough cut the pattern out with scissors and stuck it onto the wood with glue stick. This was my first time cutting the letters on the bandsaw, so my first try didn't turn out the best. My cuts were just too sloppy. For try two, I was very careful and followed the lines exactly. But this left no cushion for any sanding, so my letters still turned out too thin. For try three, I left a border of white around all my lines to be sanded off later. I cut straight into the closed parts of the letters, which is a Jimmy DeResta tip. I'll glue chunks into these to close up the gaps later. Then I sanded the letters down to final shape with a strip sander. This tool is great for this process because it lets you really get into the corners and precisely hit your edges. On a bigger sign, this wouldn't be as huge of a deal because you wouldn't be able to notice the detail on the letters. But with a small sign like this, it matters a lot. I finished the letters with thin files and a detail sander. Then I sanded off the paper patterns. And I cut some strips for the border and the middle rule. I used a compass to trace the shape of the border. And then I used wood glue and super glue combined to glue those line pieces together. The super glue dries super quick so it works like a clamp to hold the pieces together while the wood glue dries. This is another Duresta tip. And I just went back and forth between the bandsaw and the sign and roughly put the border together in one piece. Once it was dry, I sanded it to the final shape. Then I drilled a hole in the back for a hook that we'll install later. And then I started painting. First coat is a primer. 
Another duress to tip is to hot glue the letters to a stick and then paint them on there. I skipped this process when I was working on the mascot theory sign a couple of years ago, but that was a big mistake. There's no easy way to hold the letters with your hands without smudging them, and spray paint can be strong enough to actually blow the letters away. Once the primer dried, I sprayed a top coat of Montana Gold White onto the letters. And I brushed some red acrylic paint for the back. And then I sprayed on some Krylon Clear Coat. At one point, I was debating if I should glue the letters and then clear coat, but I'm glad I waited to glue because the clear coat left huge white blotches on my red paint. I'm not sure if it was a bad can or if it was too cold out or if it was just Krylon, but since my letters were waiting in the wings, I could easily repaint the whole background red again, no worries. And this time I used Montana Gold clear coat on the back because I just know that stuff works. It's well worth the extra money. With the paint dry, I screwed the hook on the back of the sign. And then I started the glue up process using PVA book binding glue. So my process for getting these letters in place was basically to go back to the original printout, find a reference point, measure from there, and then transfer that measurement to the wooden version. I got the letter placement as close as possible in a dry run, then I glued the letters down for real. If you ever get the chance to do this type of thing, it will totally make you appreciate digital typesetting. Computers do this work automatically for us. Meanwhile, I had to spend 45 minutes laying out two words. It's not like you have to be perfect, but the space between those letters really matters. Still, it's fun, it just takes some time is all. Then I cleaned up my squeeze out so there'd be no big globs of shiny glue on the sign once it dried. And that was it, the sign was complete. So could a person with very little DIY experience do something like this? I think so. It's not rocket science, it's pretty forgiving. As you can see, I went through three sets of letters, but the work is pretty quick. I would highly recommend something like that strip sander though. It just took a lot of the pressure off of cutting out those letters. And even if you do screw up, MDF is cheap and forgiving, so it's not that big of a deal. It's not like you just destroyed 400 bucks worth of walnut or something. You can just start over, no sweat. In the end, I'm happy with how it came out, and Deb seemed to like it too. So that was supposed to be for your birthday last year. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more then consider subscribing and if you have any thoughts or questions please share them in the comments down below on YouTube. I try to respond to anyone who stops by. Thanks for watching.